Hi, this is Becca Rich. I am on the online prosperity show with my friend Prosper, and we are talking about what holistic time management is, how it's going to impact your entire life, and the connection of, you know, our bodies, our minds, our spirituality, the world around us, and how all of that impacts our time. I'm hoping that you'll join us. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we explore the latest strategies and insights for achieving success and fulfillment in the digital age. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga, and today I've brought you Becca Rich. Becca, how are you doing today? Hey, Prosper. I'm good. I'm excited to be with you. I went for a run today, worked with clients, wrote a blog post, so it was a good day. Now I get to be with you. Fantastic. I love how you are able to manage your time so efficiently. And for those that are watching right now, Becca is actually a digital nomad and entrepreneur, and she is actually known as the holistic time coach. And that's the reason why she can put in running, writing, and also be on the podcast with us today. But I digress. I am actually going to be asking Becca about her story and how she actually helps people manage time because she is a seasoned traveler. She's a life coach and she's also the creator of the holistic time management um, course. And she's on a mission to help creative um, you know, entrepreneurs like yourself, especially the ones of the overachiever var variety and also those that are rebellious and all entrepreneurs that wish to accomplish their dreams without sacrificing their well-being, joy, or presence. Now, Becca, you could have told me that I'm just fumbling and actually wasting your time here. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how your personal journey and um, how you actually healed from the dysfunctional um, relationship that you had with time and what actually led you to become the holistic time coach. Yeah, thank you. And you're not wasting my time because I don't believe in time waste. So that's cool. That's probably a conversation that we can have. But so I grew up with an entrepreneur for a dad. So I was like, in entrepreneurship since I was born, I know what it requires. I know what it's like super stressful and you work a ton, lots of pressure, lots of stress. And um, I went on to become an engineer and immediately burned out. I was in the hospital and that's when I sort of like hit that come to Jesus rock bottom moment of like, I need to not work so hard. I need to be able to rest and put myself first sometimes and not only worry about, you know, productivity, optimization, efficiency like there was more to life than that in itself right I didn't want to live in a cubicle for 40 hours a week either and so I was like how do I have both how do I run a business travel the world and work 30 about 30 25 30 hours a week and that's been the journey that I've been on since I was I became a yoga teacher and started my first business as a yoga teacher and then it evolved into holistic time coaching because all of my clients said the same thing. I never have enough time. I never get enough done. I can't, my mind doesn't rest. My mind is like all over the place. I'm always overwhelmed. And time was the number one thing that I heard from people that was holding them back. And I also heard that traditional time management and like productivity advice doesn't work for a lot of people. It doesn't meet them where they're at. It, you know, it fits them into a box and um, doesn't work sustainably. It, it burns a lot of people out. And so I used my yoga background and my holistic coach certification and created holistic time management um, to really work with people and in a holistic healing and really supportive way of managing time. So long story short, that's, that's the story. <laughs> Fantastic. And also, I'm just uh, thinking here, I mean, you grew up with an entrepreneur dad, so he would have had traditional ways that he was managing his time or his business. And if he had a team or employees and things of that nature, and not only did you have 
that, um, you know, to contend with. You went on and became an engineer. And, and I think with engineering, there's precision, everything has to be timed. There yes. has to be a certain way of doing things. So what are the main differences then between your um, concept of traditional time management uh, and the approach that you now have, um, you know, with the holistic time uh, management uh, aspect then? Yeah, so... Traditional time management was also actually created by an engineer in 1910 in the U.S. And he created this concept for people working in factories, actually. And he went on to, his name was Frederick Winslow Taylor. And he went on to write a book that, you know, a lot of today's time management techniques have evolved from. And what he later, actually years later, said that he missed in a lot of these sort of like self-management, time management um, theories and strategies was he missed sort of like the whole point of life, right? Which is to enjoy it and to be with family and to have fun and to be well, to take care of ourselves. And so a lot of like traditional time management advice is to cram everything in, you know, wake up at 5 a.m. We've all heard that schedule every single moment of every single day and follow it perfectly. And if you don't, there's something wrong with you. Um, And so that was, you know, sort of my own take on traditional time management because of what I do. But that is sort of like the thing, right? Audit your time, you know, fit as much in, in the day as possible, optimize every single second. And what happens is we burn out because we're human. And so my approach, holistic time management, takes into the fact into the account that you are a whole human being. We look at your physical well-being, your mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, and fit all of that into how you think about time, um, how you use your time, incorporating rest, incorporating mindfulness and self-care, and all of these concepts that are pivotal in, in just like non-negotiable to managing our time well, to spending our time well. And what's cool, the spiritual piece too, is what's often missing in this conversation of like, life is unpredictable. We can't control every single moment, like traditional time management wants us to believe that we can. And like, how can we be flexible and adaptable and, you know, work with the universe, work with God or higher power, whoever we believe, you know, and and feel connected to um, and feel taken care of, supported. And yeah, so there's a lot of different things that I could go into. But when you're a whole human being and approach your time, like, you know, in connection with yourself, you manage it so much better. You get more done. You accomplish everything that you want to you're just doing it a lot easier because you're well taken care of and your needs are met. Absolutely. And um, I really appreciate how you took us up on, took us uh, on, on this journey to show that um, as a human being, you're not just tethered to your chair or people these days tethered to your mobile phone. You know what I mean? There's, there's more to life than just uh, being connected uh, to the one particular place and especially showing up to a building or some sort of location where people call jobs and you've really flipped that script um and um yeah i i would like to know because as a digital nomad you know your 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 lifestyle is not constant you know what i mean there is a different day every single uh day for you so as a digital nomad how has your lifestyle influenced um you know your understanding and maybe implementation of this whole holistic time management um, theory? Yeah, oh, you ask such great questions. You're a very great question question giver. Um, so I've been traveling since July of 2020. Um, I just got back from about a year-ish in Europe. And I think being able to travel and not know where I'm living in a month from now or a couple months from now and working with clients every single time zone across the world and me switching time zones to different countries, different places around the world. It's a lot to take into account. And I think it's an, a, like a test for 
my work. Like I've held routines. I've been able to take care of myself and work out from wherever I am in the world. You know, I've been able to hold regular meetings weekly with clients and podcasts and um, write a blog and send newsletters and post multiple times a day on social media. And it's because of this work. Like I have created time for everything that's important to me and my business and traveling around the world has also helped me heal my relationship to time. Um, seeing how people in other cultures think and feel and experience and use their time, you know, being in Europe versus the U S everyone in the U S is like, go, 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 go. And you get to Europe and people are sitting at a coffee shop for two hours without their phone and without their computer. And, you know, it, it's a beautiful thing to be able to go to different cultures and see how other people spend their time, use their time, um, think about time. And it's, it's a really cool evolution for, for me personally and for my work. Absolutely. We are all just doing, 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 and just showing up to places where, if you ask me, a lot of people were told in the last couple of years that they were non-essential. And it's just, um, it, it just really baffles me that people are still showing up to places where they were not needed just so they could do something uh, in life. Now, while I was looking up your stuff, you have this concept of um, you know, human beings, not human doings. And, um, you know, that, that was what, where I was leading to with that. And can you just maybe explain to us what that is and how it actually relates to your philosophy? Yeah. I mean, I, it's funny. I use the term ant, like we're little ants, right? Ant brain. And there's a part of us, like the, the reason why our society is set up to, you know, work 40 hours a week or like what, you know, all these systems and structures that, that we continue to buy into is because we like getting things done, right? As humans, we love checking things off a to-do list. We love being able to accomplish things, right? Done. And um, what? <laughs> done. <laughs> yep. Done. Check. It feels good, right? It feels good to make progress. It feels good to grow. But when it comes at the expense of our health, our well-being, our relationships, the other things that are equally as important to us, our art, our creativity, um, nature, you know, all, all these things that are equally as important as work, um, that's when there becomes an issue. And so I, I talk about sort of like how can we do things and still be, right? How can we show up to our work present and joyful and um, excited, right? Like whenever I post on social media or go on podcasts or write a newsletter or write a blog, all of it comes from, I'm so excited to do this versus I need to do this because this is what's going to grow my business and I should be doing X, Y, Z. Like I don't structure my life around shoulds or have tos. I structure my life and business around what I want to do and what excites me and what lights me up. And that allows me to do and be present and enjoy as I do. Fantastic. I believe everyone is here to be, do, and have a happier existence. And that really works in conjunction with alignment. You know, when you're goals are really aligned to your values. And you say that a lot of people are just shielding all over the place, uh, just hoping that whatever they're doing will actually bring joy and satisfaction to them. Now, from what you have realized and what you have come across, what are some of the common challenges that people face when they're trying to align their time with either their goals and values? Yeah. I mean, we sort of touched on it, right? Like we think that we have to do certain things. Um, a client of mine that I'm thinking of right now, like her thing, she hates social media. She hates Instagram. She doesn't want to do it. And so she shows up to it with that energy and um, it just, none of it feels good. Creating the post, it takes her hours and hours and hours. And so um that's one of the things like that I support my clients with is like, how do we find the actions that will actually feel good and help you get the results that you're looking for? If it doesn't feel good in some way, shape or form, 
then that's a have to, that's a should that you're, you're giving yourself. Um, and it, it can feel really confusing. And so that is something that a coach really helps you with is like, helps you reflect back to how you really are approaching things, right? If you feel like you kind of like Instagram, but you really don't like if it can feel really confusing and that's what a coach is is one of the ways that a coach can support you is helping you identify what a have to is or what a should is and if you're following them but typically my rule of thumb is if like you sit down to do it and you're like meh like over and over every single time you do it obviously we're not perfect in terms of motivation that's not real but um yeah like really feeling that dread every time you do something that's a key for following a should or a have to. Fantastic. And you take people through um, your holistic time management certification uh, program. So just tell us a little bit about what the program entails and what should anybody, um, you know, benefit from it if they decide to go along with it and how people can actually um, get started on it. Yeah. So my holistic time management coaching certification is for coaches, for service providers who work with clients. And I'm certifying them in the holistic time management framework um, to be able to support their clients better around time. One of the things I think that every coach needs to have is time management strategies and support for their clients, because that's the biggest thing that holds us back from doing the things that we want to do. And what happens is a lot of coaches just share what works for them. But like we've already talked about, you know, we're all unique. We all have different minds. We all have different bodies, different circumstances, different, you know, experiences around time, around life, around our goals. It goes a lot deeper than just like sharing a hack or something that like, you know, a strategy that works for you. Um, so the certification program helps people um, support their clients and finding the unique strategies that work for them so they can find time for the things that they want. Okay, fine. I think after this call, I'm going to unsubscribe to my 5 a.m. club and my 3 a.m. workout club and um, everything else that comes along with it and my hustle uh, care package that comes every single day, um, you know, from my Instagram feeds. Now, (laughs) Now, Becca, in a a society that really glorifies, you know, the hustle and constant busyness and, you know, get up, do stuff and things like that. How do you then encourage individuals to, first of all, like I was joking, unsubscribe and also then to just embrace a more balanced and meaningful approach to time? Yeah, this is something that has taken me a decade to sort of like wrap my head around right and I'm still wrapping my head around it um hustle culture is intergenerational and it quite frankly it's it's a form of trauma right um and it's a lot of work to heal that like honestly to be able to rest and you know take a nap read a book play video games go for a walk and still have things that you need to get done is so incredibly hard for the majority of people because it's so connected to survival and making money. And so one of the things that I I help people with around this is finding out their enoughness, like finding out how much money is enough, how much stuff to get done is enough, how much is enough for them to be able to actually relax. And the people that come to me are ready to unsubscribe to hustle culture. I'm not here to convince people who are still into it to keep, you know, to do something different. Um, I'm just here to support people who are like, this isn't working for me. I don't want to feel guilty for taking time off from work. I don't want to feel guilty for resting. I want to be able to do it whenever I want or need to. And yeah, I mean, it's it's a healing journey that I, I take people through. Fantastic. And you also mentioned an interesting concept that, you know, this whole cu- culture is intergenerational. 
because our forefathers had to do certain things in order for them to be awarded a certain wage, which was predicated on them showing up at a certain place so they could get a certain amount for them to look after their family so they can pay certain things. Yeah. Oh, should I keep going, right? But <laughs> with the rise of, say, remote work and the gig economy, that just really flips that whole tradition on its head. Now, how do you see the future of time management evolving when you don't literally have to show up at a place? And can you imagine I'm working right now? Yeah. I think, you know, there's an individual journey and then there's sort of a cultural journey. And with the pandemic, we had a huge shift in in cultural around time and time management. You know, a lot of people were told that they were non-essential and a lot of people were sitting around twiddling our thumbs being like what do I even do with my life and like feeling purposeless and that sort of like that addiction to doing or that addiction to productivity um and now sort of we're going back of like okay we're gonna you know speed back up get back into you know working 40 50 60 plus hours a week like and certain people aren't willing to do that and the, you know again those those are the people more or less that I'm I'm working with that come to me for support that don't want to hustle that don't want to grind want to figure out how to pay their bills and we go on an individual journey but that individual journey is a ripple effect because then they show that you know they're partners, their friends, their clients, the people around them, that it's possible. And that's when the cultural movement continues to grow. And of course, it's political. It's um, it's cultural. This is something that is going to happen over the next 100, 200, 300 years. Technology is involved. So many things are, are interconnected and interwoven here. And um, I'm just a little spoke in the wheel of the cultural movement towards being able to, you know, have both freedom and stability. Absolutely. So I'm also going to throw away my journal, my Pomodoro uh, clock and everything else that I've been told to maximize on my time because clearly, <laughs> you know, the 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 holistic time management uh, system uh, works perfectly. But before I throw out everything else, what are some of the practical tips or techniques that, um, you know, our listeners can actually implement, especially today without wasting any time to start experiencing the benefits um, of holistic time management. Yeah, this is going to sound super rudimentary, but honestly, like the best thing that you can do is ask yourself what you need. What do you need right now? And then give yourself that. Most of us, we probably need a quick little nap. Most of us need a meal. Most of us, you need to go outside and like stare at trees for a little bit and get off the screen. Like whatever your needs are, that's going to be the most impactful thing for your well-being, your mind, your productivity, your business, your money. All of it is going to be hugely benefited when you ask yourself what you need and give yourself that. That's the most practical thing that you can do. Hmm. What do I need right now? See, what what I need is probably a glass of whiskey and maybe just to conclude uh, this show right now. But before I actually do that, Becca, um, I just wanted to ask you a perspective here. Since we've gone into, um, you know, generational, like you have said, this is whole traditional. It's really deep rooted in our survival from what you're saying, because time literally is uh, what predicates our, you know, being compensated for leaving, yeah. right? And <laughs> with the way, you know, AI has come in and now it's taking away most of the jobs that a lot of people have. So there's no longer that deep need for you to show up at any place because you could just maybe type it in uh, to some AI and it spits out, uh, you know, the answers. Now, what is, what is your grand vision of maybe what the future looks like, especially in this holistic time management space? Do you think people are going to be 
having so much time that they'll be sitting around singing Kumbaya, oh, hitchhiking across the galaxy, um, you know, and or, or, or how do you then sort of maybe, um, you know, see this evolving and people really getting to grips with how they manage their time? Yeah, I think <laughs> that's funny. There's so many things that go into this. And I was in Berlin in April and I went to a future museum if anyone is in berlin or goes to berlin there's a great museum called the futurium and it's essentially you know all about the future and what's possible and of course time there's like this great um, piece of art when you walk in that's like you know everything that you could think of from humans to nature to technology and it's a it's like a speech bubble and then it comes down and it's time. It's like time, universe, and then like the rest of the speech bubble is everything that you can think of. And because we're all individuals with different, I want to say medicine, like we all have different strengths. We all have different skills. We all have different things that bring us joy and that, you know, create meaning and fulfillment for us. Like my ultimate vision is that we all individually get to spend our time how we want to and be able to live in that joy and live in that presence and live how we want with the people that we want and feeling okay right feeling content and stable and safe and be able to to form relationships with people meaningful relationships with people and um you know, what that looks like for government or technology or all the other things, like those things sort of morph and change and um, come together to serve us, right? To serve us as human beings who are living in our strengths, living in our power, living in our joy and, and being well taken care of. And so, you know, what that looks like is going to be different for every single person. And, and um, yeah. I don't know if I answered your question, but that's what, com what comes to mind right now. Absolutely. And I really, really appreciate you spending your time with us. And I'm just looking at the time right now. I think it's time for us to wrap this up. Becca, you've been fantastic. Thank you. You've been fantastic, too. I'm grateful for your time. Absolutely. See, while you're speaking, I got two girls and then I'm just thinking um, they've got the song. You put your whole self in, you put your whole self as you do the hockey pokey. That's like that's holistic. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everything you put your whole self in, not just the time that you you think you have to be compensated for. What, what where, where is your spirituality? Where is your mindset? Where is everything else that comes along with it? That's like really uh, taking, you know, the full uh, clock to make sure yeah. that everything is, is uh, utilized. So that's my understanding. And it's really clear that embracing a new approach to time can actually, um, you know, unlock incredible uh, possibilities for individuals seeking fulfillment and success. Now, for those that are watching right now, if you want to learn more about Becca Rich and her transformative coaching programs, make sure to visit her website. We're going to be putting all the details in the show notes here and make sure that um, you, um, yeah, just unsubscribe to anything that's really taking your time right now, especially off the clock sucking variety that's not actually putting you towards anything um, that will help you be doing have a happier existence and remember life is meant to be lived and it's never too late to create uh, a life of peace joy and presence and i want you to join us again on the online prosperity show where we continue to explore the strategies and mindsets that lead to a, prosper uh, a prosperous and fulfilling life. And until the next time, please stay inspired and keep prospering. Bye for now.